Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Brian Greer with Team Spectre at Spectre Gaming. Uh, I really appreciate you guys stopping by the video, so if you do like what we're doing here, make sure you like and subscribe. Today we are doing the Alpha Class Starwing. It's the newest bomber torpedo boat in the X-Wing Miniatures game. Uh, really excited to kind of show you guys what are the options on this ship and, and kind of talk about it. So let's take a look real quick. Um, well, let's take a look at the maneuver dial because I think importantly to take a look at this ship is is understanding its maneuver dial. Uh, it kind of looks kind of boring at first, but when we start comparing it to uh, a similar ship, say the K-Wing with Rebellion, uh, you can kind of start seeing that it has a lot of uh, options. So looking at the, the maneuver dial, we have soft ones that are white and a one green straight. The twos are really nice. Uh, the soft twos and the straight are green. Uh, the hard two is white. But where you really start seeing are in the threes. The threes are all white, but you, at least you have that hard three. Now let's compare that to the K-Wing. The K-Wing doesn't have that hard three at all. Uh, in fact, it just has the soft threes and then, of course, the straight. But this one also gives you the option of a four straight. It is red, and you might not be using that all the time. But there are abilities, say, with uh, the cruise missile that will let you... Um, take advantage of say a four straight. So I like the fact that this gives you at least that option. Um, in looking at the dial, it might look kind of boring, but when you understand that this ship has slam, it starts opening up a lot of the uh, the potential options for it. Especially when you can do say a three hard uh, and then do an advanced slam, you can almost do a, a pseudo K turn with this ship. So really, really like that. Um, I think it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a pretty maneuverable little ship. Uh, let's take a look real quick at the uh, squadrons. The first one you have is the new squadron pilot. Now, the best part about this, again, is that it's an 18-cost ship. Um, you're looking at it with two attack dice, three evade, four hull, and three shields. Very, very tanky. Got some good shields with the hull. I like that. It's got the torpedo and the missile uh, crew slots. 18 points, I like that because you can actually run probably three or four of these if you wanted to really uh, fleet a whole squadron of Alpha Class Star Wings. Now, the Row Squadron Veteran, he's the next guy on our list. He is unique in the fact that he actually is a non-named pilot, but he has the elite pilot talent. And we have found that in a lot of the Fantasy Flight uh, games with X-Wing, the second non-named pilot, if they didn't have an EPT, they're very rarely flown um, comparatively to the, the the lower pilot. You know, you can get a much more reduced cost on the ship. Yes, you don't, you know, if they are basically identical, it's just the pilot skill value. Sometimes people don't value that pilot skill as high. Uh, but this guy has an EBT, uh, comes in at pilot skill four. Um, I think it's really unique. In fact, it, I would probably see both these guys being flown in a list. Uh, really, really, I really like that. Let's take a look at the next card. We have Lieutenant Karsabi and Major Vinder. Let's actually talk about both these guys together because I think the flavor is unique and it really will start deciding on, on where you want to go. Personally, I like Lieutenant Kasabi more than Major Vinder, but you know, again, it might be all player like on what your specific taste is. Lieutenant Kasabi is pilot skill five, 24 points, so just three more points than the Row Squadron veteran. But his ability says when you receive a weapons disabled token, if you are not stressed, you may receive one stress token to remove it. What I like about this is there's gonna be a lot of ways to receive weapon disabled tokens. For example, the advanced slam, the reload option, these are ways um, that will disable your weapons. And you can basically ignore them when you're playing with Lieutenant Karsabi. He just will say, you know what? Yeah, I just advanced slam, but you know what? I'm still gonna jam uh, my weapons or my torpedoes or whatever you need to do. Um, Major Vinder says, when defending, if you have a weapons disabled token, roll one additional defense dice. Now he does have two evade right now, so I'll give him three. Um, it lets it so if you are performing an advanced slam or you need to reposition real quick, it doesn't leave you completely hanging with your, your butt out in the air. I, I do like that. I just feel like uh, Lieutenant Karsabi gives a little bit more potential options for you. Um, 
and, and lets you stay on the offensive. And, and I'm a player that likes to be offensive all the time and making sure that I'm taking it to the, uh, to the opponent. Now, um, now let's take a look real quick at some of our upgrades. Now, one of the coolest parts about this ship is it is an advanced slam ship. And so we have that advanced slam token. Um, it is the redone ship, though. It's the redone uh, errated advanced slam. Now, we all know that advanced slam has been errated in the last uh, uh, update. So it says, after performing a slam action, if you did not overlap an obstacle or another ship, you may perform a free action on your action bar. Now, let's take a look at Major Vendor. His action bar has focus, um, slam, right, reload, and target lock. So before you used to be able to perform any action, now it's very specific about action bar. But what I like about that is you can advance slam and reload. That would give you your weapons a stable token. You still can reload your, your ordinance, or you can do a focus or a target lock. Um, but the real nice thing about the advanced slam, it's about repositioning to make sure you can move your, yourself around the map. Uh, and kind of throw your opponent for the whole. A lot of the thing about X-wing is making sure that you can uh, guess what your opponent's doing, and so you can position yourself. Advanced time changes a lot of that, so I really like that. Linked battery. This is when attacking with a primary weapon or a secondary weapon, you may reroll one attack die. This is like a, a miniature predator, and it fills the uh, gun slot, so you don't have to take the EPT for it. I do like it, and I know. Uh, Fantasy Flight featured this with uh, Flechette Cannon as a way to, you know, it gives you an option like a build with new Squadron Pilot Linked Battery Flechette Cannon to kind of, and as well as the title, I believe the title right here, you kind of have to run it with the title. The title says XG1 Assault Configuration. Uh, your, up, your upgrade bar gains two of the weapon upgrade icons. You may perform attacks with a weapon, secondary weapon that costs two or fewer squad points, even while you have a weapons disabled token. So the idea on this is that you could say run, you can run the title with say like Mangler Cannon, Tractor Beam, or Flechette Cannon. You can have two cannons. And when you do have your self um, stressed, you could easily have a secondary option to continue you know being offensive that way you're not always running around um unable to fight the linked battery is unique and i like that it's not you know specific to the star wing you could put it on another ship so you could put it on say like a b wing um and and give it some options i'd love to see linked battery on a b wing with mangler cannon i think that'd be really really cool uh the fact that it gives you an additional you know mini predator like ability um, while keeping your EPT available for other, other options. Uh, next, we have a cruise missile. Uh, I like the cruise missile. Like I said earlier, um, the fact that this gives you a four straight kind of helps uh, potential cruise missile shots. So it says attack, target lock. So you have to have a target lock to use this. Discard this card to perform this attack. You may roll additional attack dice equal to the speed of the maneuver you executed this round to a maximum of four additional dice. So if you did your four straight and uh, still were able to have a, an engagement and you shot your cruise missile, you could roll, you know, four additional dice on top of uh, on top of uh, the one that lets you roll. So that's that's nice. I like that. I like that ability. It kind of reminds me of the, you know being able to have the punch of a proton missile. So definitely could see this uh, coming to play. Jamming beam. This is a uh, this is interesting because. It kind of fills the role of the tractor beam uh, ability at once at one cost. Has three roll on the tack dice. Uh, the range is only one to two. So does that mean Fantasy Flight believes that this is uh, a better weapon than tractor beam because it's only got two instead of three? Uh, it's interesting. And so it says attack one ship. If this attack hits, assign the defender one jam token, then cancel all dice results. But what is what does a jam token do? So I'm going to pull up here. The, uh, the rules on jam tokens. It says, when a ship has both a jam token and a focus, evade, or blue target lock token, remove the jam token. Then that ship chooses and removes of its one focus, evade, or blue target lock tokens. Um, only I want to read that one more time. Then that ship chooses and removes of its of its one focus evader blue target lock token. A ship is jammed if it has a jam token. 
So this kind of will help against those aces that are uh, token hogs who like to um, perform multiple actions on a turn and they're going to have an evade, focus, target lock. Um, this jamming will kind of slow them down. And what I like about that is you can basically play the Alpha Class Starwing as a support ship. You can have your two aces or your two damage dealer ships and the Alpha Class Starwing is more of a, a support ship and trying to slow your opponent from doing what they want to do. I really, really like that. I think it's going to perform some, some good options. Uh, next, we're going to go with the OS1 Arsenal Loadout. This is a title. Your upgrade bar gains the torpedo and missile upgrade icons. You may perform attacks with torpedoes and missiles, secondary weapons, against ships that you have locked, even while you have a weapons disabled token. Now, this is important that you have to actually have the target lock already established, and then you can use your uh, secondary weapons, uh, torpedoes, evil, even while uh, weapons disabled. Now, what I like about that is, again, this ship, while having many ways to disable its weapons, it's not taking itself out of the fight. And this gives you another option to conti continually stay in the fight and uh, keep using your weapons. I like that a lot. The last one we have here is a new EPT. It is a wall of text. So let's read this slowly for you guys. After you perform an attack with a missile or torpedo secondary weapon that does not hit, each ship at range one of the defender with an agility value lower than the squad point cost of the torpedo or missile upgrade card must roll one attack die and suffer any hits or critical damage rolled. Uh, this card is, is a good card. I like the flavor of this card, but I feel like the card is a little complicated for new players. Uh, might be hard to understand or to uh, conceptualize what it means. Um, so let's take a look at one of our torpedoes. So we have the cruise missile here. Its cost is three. That means that any of the ships that, that are range one of the ship that we're targeting has to have an agility value less than three for this to do any kind of damage to it. Um, situational, yes. Uh, is it going to be coming to play often? No. And again, so you're filling, again, your most valuable slot, which is that EPT slot, with a, an, an ability that's not going to do, uh, it's not going to be as active as you want it to be. Like, I, I've always been a big proponent that if you're going to have an ability that's going to fill a slot, you want it to be used more than half the time. You want to be able to use that multiple times in a game. Uh, this, you might be able to use once or twice, and then it's done. So... While I like Fantasy Flight coming out with more EPT abilities, I really like them to uh, find a way to have them more um, more reliable because these are very niche and very uh, unreliable. So that's the Alpha Class Starwing. Um, let me know what you guys think of it. Is this a ship that you would consider purchasing or are you thinking about flying it? I have a friend who's already purchased three of them um, because he wants to fly a three-man squad. So is that something that you would do? Would you guys be interested in seeing that in action? Let me know. Uh, leave a comment down below. If you do like the video, remember to like and subscribe. And anyways, guys, have a great day. Fly casual.